In the last video we covered combat and spells, today let's take a look at what makes these spells truly what they are. Hey everyone, Blake here and welcome back for another video. If you haven't watched my combat and spells video, I suggest you watch that one first. This is a follow up to show how talents and abilities for your character will go hand in hand with spellcasting. In many RPGs, the use of talents and abilities is what makes your character more powerful as they level up. Skills and abilities get more advanced as the player levels up and places attribute points to a specific category. Doing this adds so many different styles of play. Hogwarts Legacy will have skills and abilities to make you have tons of different playstyles based on what you want to do within the game. They will provide a deep dive into upgrades, talents, and skills to aid your progression as a witch or wizard. These can be leveled up by completing challenges throughout the world to earn experience. Level up your abilities by choosing talents to upgrade your spells, plants, and potions. It is completely up to you. They also mention that you can loot, craft, and buy your own magical gear. Mentioning this leads me to believe that pieces of gear will also have some attribute points to them. Having attribute points on gear will increase your offensive and defensive abilities in combat. Based on the playstyle you want to choose, your gear can be upgraded to match. This can be done by adding traits to the gear, upgrades, and overall appearance. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. We cover all things in the Wizarding World, including Hogwarts Legacy. Now that you understand the importance of talents and abilities, let's take a closer look at what was shown at the State of Play event. At the top of the screen is the first look at what our menu screen will look like. This is where we'll find information about our character, inventory, collections, challenges, map, outpost quests, and most importantly for this video, talents. Once you've selected talents, it appears that we'll have five categories to split points up into. Starting at the far right, we can see a house elf holding a potion. It was announced that we do have our own personal house elf that will be helping us create and maintain our room of requirement. If you choose to put points into this category, this will improve your ability in the room of requirement. I'm assuming this has to do with things like potion wait times while crafting, healing a magical beast, and tending to magical plants. The next category is the stealth category. This is what aids the player in not being caught when sneaking around. We already saw in this video where our character goes almost completely invisible to sneak up behind their enemy. The category is going to be a great one to level up for those that want to explore every inch of the game. I know I'll be leveling up this one as much as I can. The category pictured in the middle is all about your character's core progression. This is what will improve your overall effectiveness while playing in the wizarding world. After clicking into this, we might see some sort of skill tree that I have pictured in previous videos. They mentioned that the use of dozens of spells is available and each playstyle will be different. I would imagine this is where we choose what spells fit us the best. Leveling up this category is a must to becoming whatever witcher wizard you wish to be. Now to look at the far left categories. They don't hover over them to show us what they are, but here are my thoughts on this. This is where we choose to either be noble or evil. The one on the far left appears to picture someone for the greater side of magic where the other appears to show a more sinister look. They have already told us that we'll be able to choose our own path. Our legacy is what we make of it, right? To me, this is 100% where we choose that path. Leveling up characters based on the noble category has the student following the rules, going to class, learning all they can about the wizarding world, for the Sinister category has the student learning about the power they possessed, how to turn that ancient magic that no one understands into something that no one will be able to control. I have been getting a lot of comments on the Killing Curse as well and honestly I think this is how you will earn it. You will have to max out the Sinister category to be able to achieve the amount of hatred to cast such a spell. Also, for the people that want to play both, based on what's pictured at the time, I don't know just yet. The screen shows that 5 points have been placed into the Noble category, where 1 point has been placed into the Sinister. I don't know what all could be within the Sinister side of things, maybe they aren't all as bad as using the Killing Curse, so putting some points here might not completely hurt your character's path. This might just be how they had their stats set up, but to me it appears that you can put points into both categories. So my question to you is this, what side will you choose, Noble or Sinister? Let me know down in the comments below. In the next video, I'll show you the best way to get sorted into your house for Hogwarts Legacy, so you don't want to miss this one. If you would like to stay up to date on all things Hogwarts Legacy and my channel, join the ever-growing Discord linked in the description. I'm looking for admins, so don't hesitate to message me. Also, follow me over on Twitter, at Scrubwork. I discuss all things Hogwarts Legacy and Harry Potter with some of your favorite creators. If you would like to watch my last video, click the video on the left, or if you'd like to watch all my Hogwarts Legacy videos in one place, click the playlist at the right of your screen now. If you enjoyed a like rating is always appreciated, and as always, I'll see you Wizarding fans in the next video. Have a great day.